Hey, we're trying something new. A podcast called Thanks for Being a Part of the Conversation. A part of the conversation that you don't get to fall witness to is my love for this forest in South Charlotte, North Carolina. In the 1990s, I was the poet in the forest. It was a children's series that I pinned out. None of it would be possible if it wasn't for this forest where I presently stand right here in Charlotte. I talk about it and write about it so much that I thought it was time that you get to be a part of what has been inspiring me since 1992. Hey, thanks for being a part of the conversation. How do you interview a forest and not think that people assume you're insane? A guy that's losing his mind in his 60s. When in fact, this story is what's put so many different stories inside my heart. I'm standing next to this tree right now on the side of this hill. They tell me, they tell me that from the street to the stream meeting the lake, it's a 95 foot drop. Well, as the one that was invited to take care of this land, that scared me because there was a lot of erosion in the 1990s and I wanted to protect every tree that was on this land. I wanted to protect the grass, which became an impossibility because when you've got that much rain coming down this hill, a 95 foot drop, the chances of ever having a Home Depot low style lawn, totally insane. But I'm standing next to this tree And one of the goals was to plant a North Carolina tree, something that was very natural. The strength of your colors at the end of July just blows me away. But what's fascinating about you, the tree, is that in the midst of winter, when we've had our snowstorms, you've always remained green. It's almost like that one little moment in your life where the fantasy becomes the reality. Do you remember... Do you remember the conversations I had when I said, I need your help? Do you remember when I would say, this is our moment of slowing down the water? It's almost like the air from my lungs when I have to go up this 95 foot hill. I'm going to lose a lot of air like the water flowing down this hill. Do you remember the times of me coming out here with a writing instrument and writing? Over here to my right, you see the bridge, Mr. Tree? That bridge... I held many, many of my rescues in their passing moments. This hill served as a very sacred land in the way of those passing moments. My Maltese, my Chinese crested, none of them left this house with their bodies of lifelessness until we made this walk down this 95 foot drop. I want to interview the owls that have stood so proudly on top of these trees because they were there watching. But this tree, always made of green. The poet, that's what I am in the forest. And you know what's so fascinating is what you don't see is how this tree has wrapped itself around me, its leaves. It knows that I'm here to share your story, to build upon the promise of a new tomorrow in the way of allowing other writers to create their own forest. The trees... The times when it was very dangerous for me to be out here, but I had to be in a place of now. The stone that's at your base, do you know why I planted it there? Do you know why? It's because I didn't want the water racing down the hill during a southern storm to take you away from me. And so I thought if I put this large stone in front of you, it would keep you here a little bit longer than just yesterday. And you're here, you're here. This is what's fascinating about this forest. And if you could just feel its branches wrap around me. I want to go through each and every one of these stories because we all have things that we should be writing about and sharing with the generations that follow. I now stand in front of grapevines. These grapevines were planted here, not because of me. It's not because I wanted the grapes. It's because I know that this area of the world, there are a lot of migrating birds. And I use those grapes to help feed them when they come flying through here and need the energy. And now these leaves wrap around me from the grapevines. Look at how long they are. Do you remember when I came up to you and said, your fruit is not for my journey, but rather those that you may never meet again? Is it magic or is it just nature speaking in a way that only a few get to listen to? But how do you teach others to do that? I'm next to a Leland right now in this 95 foot drop. The Lelands were put here because of the erosion. I did not want erosion on this hill. 
And as I speak, a frog is leaping <laughs> toward the stream. <laughs> if you could spend a moment inside this world, just a moment, I think you would find reason to pick up a writing instrument and share a story. Better yet, to create a conversation. And I really do want to thank you for being a part of this one.